Good afternoon. My name is Dr. David Smotridge. I'm the founder and medical director of La Jolla IVF. I've been practicing advanced reproductive technologies in our community now for the past 19 years. The main difference between men and women with regards to fertility is men can make fully functional sperm until they die. Sperm counts do indeed go down after a gentleman is approximately age 50, significantly lower after age 70 but not only in our laboratory, but also in nature, when a gentleman's sperm is mixed with the egg of a younger woman, not only do you have fertilized embryos, but you also have the ability to have healthy embryos that can go on to become pregnancies and ultimately healthy children. Women, on the other hand, are born with a certain number of eggs. When a baby girl is first born, she has the ability to make about two million eggs. When she starts hitting puberty, she has the ability to make about 200,000 eggs. Every month she has a certain allotment of follicles. Follicles are fluid-filled structures that we see on ultrasound that have the potential to become eggs. Without any meds to block the ovaries, like the birth control pill, without any meds to encourage the ovaries to grow and develop, like our fertility meds, generally a woman releases a single egg every month and every other follicle is absorbed by the body, never to be regained again. As women get into their 30s, they start to have fewer and fewer follicles and the capacity to make fewer and fewer eggs. This significantly starts to be an issue after age 35 and dramatically becomes an issue after age 40. In fact, women after age 40 have a very high risk of having poor quality eggs and embryos from those eggs that are genetically abnormal to the number of perhaps 85 to 90 percent of embryos created by a 40-year-old will be genetically not normal with various different chromosomal abnormalities like Down syndrome and other issues. One of the technologies that we are using today is called egg freezing or oocyte freezing. Now, while this is not new because our practice has been doing it since 2004 and we've had many, many patients who have gone through, uh, this has gotten quite a bit more worldwide attention. One of the major breakthroughs that have happened with regards to egg freezing is the ability to use a technology called vitrification. And earlier we were able to show under the microscope exactly how we freeze an egg using this new vitrification technology. In our practice, our lab director is Dr. Barry Bear from Stanford and we use the Stanford vitrification protocol. Since starting this technology, we've been able to have approximately a 98 to 99 percent survivability of each egg that we have thawed, as well as a very high fertilization rate using the ICSI technology and very high pregnancy rates. Worldwide, it's anticipated there are several thousand children born using the technology of egg freezing. This has become more and more popular for women to consider doing as they are not in committed relationships and as they are getting older. Because as we mentioned earlier, women are born with a certain number of eggs. This week alone, we had two separate patients, both in their late 20s and one in their early 30s that had no gentleman in their life, but wanted the reassurance and insurance that they had some of their own genetic material frozen. Both of them underwent the process where we used the birth control pill initially to help put both ovaries in sync together. We use very small needle type of injections for about 10 to 12 days. During that time, patients have four or five visits with us for vaginal ultrasound to watch the follicles grow and develop and blood hormonal levels to make sure that the woman is responding appropriately. Then, under ultrasound guidance, under anesthesia, in a procedure that lasts about 15 minutes, I stick a needle through the vagina into the ovary and we surgically remove the eggs. Most patients tolerate this procedure very, very well. I've done over 4,000 egg retrieval procedures and patients are in the recovery room for about an hour and given medications to aid them in a rapid recovery. That same day, we know number of eggs and quality of eggs, as well as the number that we are able to freeze. One of the women who we took care of was 29, and she gave us a total of 12 eggs that we were able to freeze. 
Another woman who was 34 did very well also and gave us 10 eggs that she was able to freeze. Both of these women were somewhat concerned prior to going forward, but were amazed at how easy it was after the procedure was done. One is a veterinarian and one has her own business in town. In the last two years, we've had a growth of about 150% in our practice of patients having the desire to freeze eggs. As I mentioned previously, we used older technologies as far as 10 years ago, and we were one of the first practices ever to do egg freezing and offer this generally to patients who not only wanted to preserve their ovarian tissue, but for many patients who had uh, recent diagnosis of cancer, recent diagnosis of significant illness, or significant reasons to need to preserve their fertility. Now in 2014, because the technology has been so well defined and the success rates in terms of freezing, surviving the thaw, normal fertilization, beautiful embryo development, and pregnancies and babies, there are many more women who are interested in preserving their own fertility. Again, in summary, because women are born with a certain number of eggs, and after age 35 is when they have a decrease in the quality of eggs and number of eggs that they produce. There's a simple technique called egg freezing or oocyte freezing using the Stanford vitrification protocol to be able to freeze oocytes or eggs. Patients tolerate the procedure very, very well. There's one surgical procedure that takes about 15 minutes that's done under anesthesia and patients are fine to go home about an hour after the procedure. And that is a summary of oocyte uh, vitrification and freezing.